Hello all. In today's video, I am going to explain few terms which are required for understanding the Nyquist stability criteria. You know, the Nyquist stability criteria is used to identify the presence of roots of a characteristic equation in a specified region of S plane. So, to understand the Nyquist plot, we need to learn some terminologies. Okay. So, first one we will see what is meant by encirclement. You can just see here. I have marked it. What is an encirclement? So, a point is said to be encircled by a closed path if it is found inside that closed path. For example, here if you have a closed path like this, then uh, let there be a point A. Then you can see that this point A is encircled by this path. Let, let me name the path as tau s. It is encircled by the path tau s. Now, so, if this path now, it here it is a simple path, you can easily count whether this point A is encircled by this path. But in some cases, it is difficult to find the encirclement of a particular point. In that case, we have to do the counting of, counting the number of encirclements. So, for complicated closed path, it is better to count the number of encirclements of a point. So, for that purpose, what we have to do is, we have to, let us just consider a diagram like this. Okay. So, I'll be just this one is tau of s that is a path and I just want to find uh, this point A how many times it is encircled by this path. So, for that what I have to do is I have to uh, we have to draw a vector outside from that point. Okay. So, then uh, let it be in anticlockwise direction. Okay. Uh, it can be clockwise or anticlockwise. So, generally, we will be taking the anticlockwise uh, rotation as positive and clockwise as negative. So, here you can just see how many at this point, this vector, you just see the path is intersecting once. Okay. So, uh, once in which direction? You can see that it is in clockwise direction here. Sorry, anticlockwise direction here. So, it is like you can see this encirclement is here. We will be marking that arrow here. It is in anticlockwise direction, so it is plus 1. So, n is equal to 1, plus 1 in this particular case. Now, we will just see, uh, take another example, okay, in which uh, the curve is, I will be just drawing a more complicated curve. Not that much complicated, but uh, for you to understand how it is looking like. So, here, this one is the path and this is our tau of s. And here, this is again here, this one. Okay, I'll be just marking a point A here. Okay, let this point be A. I just want to see how many times this path is encircled. This point is encircled by this path. Okay, so what I have to do, I have to draw a vertical, the uh, draw a vector starting from that point, going outside. Okay, now see the first, first intersection is at this point. So here it is in clockwise direction. So, clockwise we always take a negative. So, 1 in clockwise direction here. And the second intersection, you just see the direction, it is again in clockwise. So, here you have again minus 1. So, the number of encirclement when you are taking, you just add this number. So, 1 plus 1, 2 and negative sign. So, minus 2. So, this point A, this uh, point A is encircled by this path in clockwise direction twice okay so this path is encircling the uh, point twice in clockwise direction now one more example i will just take here okay this one this is the direction this is tau of s this one okay now i'll be just taking a point here a and i want to find how many encirclement this path is making for this point so uh, what i'll do i'll just draw a vector starting from that point and draw outside at the first intersection here so that is in anti-clockwise direction that is plus one you can see the second intersection is happening here it is in clockwise direction so, just make it clockwise direction minus 1. So, plus 1 
minus 1 the total number is plus 1 minus 1 is 0 so that means the point a is not encircled by this path so this is how you will find it out how uh, whether a point is encircled by a path or not or how many encirclement the point is the path is making for that point so this is one thing you need to understand while uh, solving the Nyquist stability criteria then another term which you need to understand is analytical functions and singularities a mathematical function is said to be analytical at a point in a plane if its value and its derivative have finite existence at that point. So, um, if at a point in a plane the value of a function or its derivative is infinite, then that function is said to be non-analytic at that point and such a point is called singularity of the function. So, when you talk about in terms of uh, transfer function, you can see that uh, the values, the poles, um, the values of the poles make the function value infinite. So, that means in general, poles of the function are its singularity. Singularities are those values which make the function infinite. Okay. So, this is one thing, analytical function, singularities, then you need to understand a mapping theorem or the principle of argument. This is very important in understanding the Nyquist stability criteria. So, it states that uh, suppose we are taking a function f of s, let it be a single valued function, it is analytic at all points in s plane except some finite number of points. We know when we are taking the transfer function, it will become uh, the value becomes infinite at uh, the when you substitute the pole value. So, we are just taking f as a single uh, valued function analytical at all points except for few points. But those points we can't consider for the mapping. So, consider an arbitrary close path tau of s in s plane in such a way that let me just uh, take a path in s plane in such a way that the function f s is analytical at each and every point on that tau s path so which means it should not pass through the poles of f of s so now let me take let me draw this okay uh, this one i'm just taking a path just a random path okay uh, this is a tau of s path and this is our s plane Okay, so what we are going to do, okay, I'll just consider a few points here. This one, let me take a uh, pole here, let me take a zero here and let me consider a pole again here. So this one, let it be minus one, okay. So now let it be minus three and this let it be minus four, okay. So just according to the scale when you are to. So, if we can see uh, in this diagram here a path tau s and um, two poles and one zero is there okay and another plane I am just drawing which is uh, I am just drawing another plane which is called as the f plane okay and this path is tau dash s okay now what does it states now here we are considering arbitrary path tau of s in s plane so, in such a way that we, what we are doing is we are mapping this uh, path into uh, another plane. So, here from S plane, we are mapping this to another plane called as F plane and this tau of S is ma mapped onto tau dash S in F plane. So, using a function F of S. So, this function should be a single valued function. It should be analytic at each and every point in this path. So, means whenever we are taking the function which is the mapping function, it should be analytical at every point on this path, means tau of s. So, suppose I am taking a point here, the function should, should have a finite value, here it should have a finite value, it should. So, similarly, it is like every uh, point on this path, it should have a finite value. So, it should, that means that it should not pass through the poles. So, this path should not pass through this pole because once uh, the once the pole is present in this path on this path means that particular uh, point the function value becomes infinite it is not for mapping it is not we can't consider that point because the function should be analytic in nature so let uh, let us consider that p and z be the number of poles and zeros of f of s which are encircled by tau so we will be just taking uh, poles uh, poles and zeros which is encircled by tau of s so, let us consider P is the number of poles encircled by this tau of S in S plane. So, how many poles are encircled by this in this S plane? It is 1. Even though you can see 2 poles there in this diagram, only 1 pole is encircled by this path. So, P is 1. 
and Z is the number of zeros encircled by this path here you can see inside this uh, path region uh, there is no zero present even though one zero is present outside so we ne we need not consider that one because we are considering only the poles and zeros which is encircled by this tau of s path so zero is zero is it a zero so according to this uh, mapping theorem the closed path t of s in s plane can be mapped into another plane called as f plane to get a closed path tau dash s so what we are doing is we are mapping this tau of s from s plane to tau dash s in f plane so mapping theorem states that the mapped locus tau dash s encircles the new origin of f plane as many times as the difference between the number of zeros and poles of f of s which are encircled by tau s plane in s plane so what is this mapping theorem states it states that the new origin so this is the origin the new origin of, of this f plane which is encircled by the tau dash s uh, path it should encircle the origin as many times as the num difference between the number of poles difference between the number of zeros and poles in present inside this encircled by the uh, tau of s plane what does it mean it means n should be equal to z minus t z we know it is a number of zeros encircled by tau of s path in s plane and p is the number of poles encircled by tau of s plane tau of s path in s plane so when we map this tau of s into tau dash s which is in the f plane the new origin in f plane should encircle the origin that and uh, origin of this tau dash s that one it the tau dash s should encircle the new origin in f of s plane as many times as the difference between the number of zeros and poles of f of s which is encircled by tau of s in s plane that is n is equal n should be equal to z minus p so in this particular case we can see that um, n is equal to z minus p here it is zero and uh, minus p it is minus 1 so here it is n is equal to minus 1 that means here this should encircle here it is mid mark the direction okay so this one should in this path tau dash s should encircle the new origin once in minus means in clockwise direction so this is how so n is equal to z minus p that is the new origin the the path made by the mapping of tau dash s this new origin in f of plane should be encircled by this tau dash s in the difference between as many times as the difference between the number of zeros and poles in which is encircled by tau s in s plane so n is equal to z minus p we are getting it as minus 1 means the origin should be encircled by the new path tau dash s uh, once in clockwise direction so this statement is called as principle of argument so this is very important the statement is called as principle of argument that is n is equal to z minus p where n is the encirclement of origin of f plane by tau dash s path and p is the number of poles of fs encircled by tau s path in s plane and z is the number of zeros of fs encircled by tau s path in s plane so this is principle of argument so you need to understand um, what is mean by principle of argument because for solving Nyquist stability criteria this is very much important so I will come with the Nyquist criteria in the next video thank you